listening to Keeping It Real with Janine, your guide to living an authentic, healthy life podcast. I'm Janine Strong, and every two weeks, I have an inspiring conversation with an ordinary person leading an extraordinary life. And my conversation today is with just such a person, Dr. Marilyn Atkinson. Marilyn is the founder of Erickson Coaching International and originator of the comprehensive, solution-focused, and outcome-oriented coaching model. Since founding Erickson in 1980, Marilyn Atkinson has developed many effective, specialized coach training programs that are currently being taught in about 55 countries. She has written and co-authored eight books, including the Art and Science of Coaching Trilogy. She's celebrated for assisting corporate leaders to develop resilient, motivated teamwork across multicultural environments. Greetings, Marilyn. Welcome to the podcast. Ah, oh, thank you, Janine. Oh, I appreciate I'm, being here. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you on. You are one of my mentors uh, in the coaching world, and uh, I consider you to be one of the more brilliant people in the field. Uh, now, two years ago, I had one of your students and instructors on to talk about overcoming stuckness in your life. And we had wanted to talk about the four gremlins, but we ran out of time. And I thought that since you originated this model, it would be wonderful to have you on the podcast to share your perspective and teach us about the four gremlins and how we can use this model to move forward with something we want to accomplish but are getting stuck. Okay, I'd be happy to, Janine. Great. So could we start with your your background a little bit so people can get to know you and then we'll get into the four gremlins. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm a British Columbia and a Canadian by background. Mm -hmm. I was born here and I uh, have lived here all my life with um, raising several children and now four grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And uh, I travel a lot. I teach in multiple countries. Uh, uh, my company, Erickson Coaching International, has spread quickly. There's a huge branch in China with about 2,000 graduates a year. Wow. And uh, the same is true in Europe, in many, many countries, as well as in Russia and in uh, Africa, in uh, South America, in Indonesia and Asia. So uh, this is a, a leading area of coaching application, including corporate coaching and personal coaching and family coaching and and uh, coaching for teachers and coaching in the area of negotiations and so on. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've got many different trainers, about 200, and uh, all these applications going out into different areas of the world. Mm -hmm. Now, I think your training is one of the most comprehensive, and I, I love all of the, the, the different models that you've created to help people move forward. Before we get started, you may as well uh, let people know if they want, if they're interested in learning how to become a life coach and, and incorporating that into their work or just just in their interpersonal relationships, um, uh, how might they go about doing that? Okay. Uh, we uh, invite people to phone in and inquire anytime. Um, and you might as well start sure. with the website, www.erickson, E-R-I-C-K-S-O-N dot E-D-U. And there's phone numbers there to speak to um, people who can answer questions about life coaching or corporate coaching or uh, various kinds of applications of coaching. And uh, there's a huge personal development arena as well. So you can have all your questions asked and answered Great. there. Thank you. So let's turn our attention to stuckness. I know I've gone through feeling stuck at various times in my life. And, and I know a lot of people who, you know, they have a vision for what they want to accomplish, and they just having trouble getting motivated or just feeling stuck or not, not, not knowing where to start. I thought the the four gremlin model uh, might be a good place to us uh, for them to start to move forward. Tell us about it. Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> well, you've come to the right person, <laughs> Janine, because uh, this is an area where I put attention as a psychologist. I'm a psychologist by background for at least 10 years of my mm. life. And I really studied how people had breakthroughs. That was my interest. What allowed people to you know, put on their socks and their boots and say enough of all that and simply start to start with the next phase of their life and say, you know, I'm not broken. I have resources. I'm okay. I can do the best I can and get results. And I can start mm -hmm. now. Because that's what really changes the mind-brain system that we have. Uh, it's what we do that then shifts all the, if you want to call it, internal dialogue commentary that we carry with us. Because gremlins, that's an, another word for small mm, fears. Okay. And small fears may be quite small. They may be just simply a line in our, in our internal dialogue that comes by every now and then oh, you can't do it, or something like that. Or other people are better than you. Mm. Or you're wasting your time. Some, some kind of little, um, call it pull the plug kind of uh, commentary. Or I'm getting too, I'm too old. <laughs> I hear that a lot. There's one, there's one yeah. <laughs> uh, all these things. And they often come from uh, the culture around us. Uh, we see ourselves as inferior because we're one color or another, one sex or another, one age group or another, all these kinds of uh, frameworks that are really quite irrelevant to what we actually can accomplish mm -hmm. just any day, any time, in any pair of boots. Mm -hmm. Do you find that uh, that there's a fair number of people who actually are are more afraid of success than they are of failure? Well, uh, fear can be linked to any label. Fear of success, fear of failure, fear of uh, unwanted attention, fear of uh, wanting attention. You know, I mean, it goes on and on and on. But uh, these are stories we tell ourselves. And the, the way we move past them and, and it does start with noticing the stories, we need to notice these commentaries, is to take an overview of our life and actually say, what is the life that is calling me? Mm -hmm. What is the real uh, focus that uh, brings on my energy and my love of living and my capacity even to assist other people mm -hmm. Uh, even when I may not feel I'm good enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So starting with that, okay. Uh, okay. we can take a look. So the first thing is we need to decide to take a look inward and uh, discover the different kinds of thought systems that play play in the stratosphere of our mind. It's like different kinds of cloud formations, you know? Mm -hmm. Another term for this is often VUCA, you know, uh, sometimes we've got cause effect simplifications and projections. I can't because the famous word because. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's nonsense, but it stops us. Mm -hmm. It's often just an old story. And sometimes it's contradictory information. We're telling ourselves one thing on one hand and another thing on another hand. Or we're getting that from newspapers. You know, I you can't do anything about climate change. It's over. The the it's already in place. You know that climate change is in our house. Uh, we're not going to be able to do anything going forward. And then someone else says, but we've got 12 more years. We still can change things. And then uh, you know, there's still a chance for the human race, and so on. So there's contradictory information, and people throw up their hands and say. Oh, I can't, I can't act when I really don't know. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we can act and we can uh, begin to, uh, for example, with coaching, uh, write up different choices on a wheel and begin to explore the range of different choices and start. Mm -hmm. And then 
sometimes the information seems too complex. You know the VUCA model, don't you, Janine? No, I don't, actually. Maybe you could explain that to me. Okay, it's just a series of capital letters. Okay. Volatile, that's the cause-effect simplifications. Uncertain or insoluble, that's usually when we have contradictory information mm -hmm. or we tell ourselves contradictory information. Sometimes we have, you know, one little voice, uh, one internal dialogue, self yelling one thing on one side. Oh, you can't. It's too dangerous. And another voice saying, go ahead. It's time. <laughs> you know what yes, I, mean? I do. <laughs> you know, our thought systems are quite interesting if we pay attention to them. Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> the, third, the third letter in VUCA is complex. Too much information. And of course, we live in the age of the internet. There's always too much information. Mm -hmm. And this is the big one because people often become passive when it seems like there's too many choices available. It's almost immobilizing. And yeah. And that's that's what I call a gremlin system. Mm -hmm. the, the place where we say, oh, can't do it too much. Mm -hmm. And what about A? Is there A in there? A stands for ambiguous, mm -hmm. and that's probably the big one, because um, it really is why these are like clouds. We can't see the blue sky. Mm -hmm. And some people really want clarity. They think they have to be clear about things. They think they have to get all the information that's available first. Right. And there's never enough information to act. Mm -hmm. And often with a key issue, and I mentioned climate change before, there's a key issue, mm -hmm. and there's never enough information to act. But the paradox is we've got to act now. Mm -hmm. and if we don't, you know, it'll be too late to act. So uh, we are always in the area of gremlins. True. <sighs> I like the phrase, just do something. <laughs> You know, if, well, when you yeah. feel stuck, just, just do something, some little thing, just to take that first step. I know for myself, uh, very often, it's that first step that's the most difficult. And then once I get going, I'm fine. But it's that, that very first step in moving forward that tends to immobilize me. Well, as soon as people start something, uh, then uh, it's like the world comes to your aid. <laughs> All around you, you find resources mm -hmm. and you find other people with common aims and dreams, uh, small teams form, uh, you find inner abilities you didn't know you had, mm -hmm. you discover your humor, <laughs> you discover setbacks don't kill you, <laughs> they actually make you stronger, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, life becomes rich. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll go through what I call the four gremlin model, because that's quite useful here. Okay, great. Uh, see, a lot of people uh, put much too much uh, attention to their internal dialogue okay. and far too little attention to their vision. Mm. Now, this is part of our history. You know, we're just evolving as human beings out of um, the mammal age when uh, auditory information was the main ways we communicated. You know, we grunted and growled and, and uh, playfully yelped and did all these things. And we communicated with our young that way. And so now as we're human, tonal communication is preeminent. It's, it's the way we know we're alive. And so uh, small children, learn to babble first thing babies and uh in fact they it sh it was discovered just recently that uh people learned language by singing to each other oh, really at the hunting uh wild game they would break into small parts of the uh, little family system and try to herd maybe the wildebeest or some kind of uh antelope towards the edge of a cliff and they'd start singing across that uh, area, you know, uh, are you listening? Are you listening? And the other group would sing back. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. 
Will the beast are coming? Will the beast are coming? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm actually kind of visualizing it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're very auditory is what I'm saying. Mm. But the deep integrative part of our brain that organizes our resources uh, into a big model of clarity and purpose is visual. And why is that? Well, you've probably heard the phrase that a vision is worth a thousand words. Mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Right? Well, our large cerebral cortex is designed for visual thinking. And it's very, very comprehensive. The thing is that we hardly have our awareness on it until we turn our awareness there with open-ended questions, sort of asking, well, what do I really want here? What's really important to me in this situation? Uh, what do I want to tell people? Or what do I want to do that could lead me forward? And as soon as we ask, we get inner visions or little movies that assist us. And uh, all of a sudden, we get um, a linkage across the brain. What's shown with fMRI uh, instruments is that the whole brain starts to reconnect and light up, and we start to link into our resources. Interesting. You need to link into your resourceful whole brain thinking, mm -hmm. and then you find that inner power that moves you past internal dialogue. Hmm. Interesting. Thank you for that. I really, I, I hadn't, uh, I, I hadn't realized the, the actual physiology of it. And that's, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, it's very important. I'm, I'm doing a lot of neuroscience conferences these days and, and people have a lot of neuroscience information, but it's interesting. They're only now putting it together to realize what allows people really useful choice and change? And so we've built Erickson Coaching around useful choice and change in a very directive way uh, in the sense that we focus on what's most important in every coaching session mm -hmm. and we take people directly to their resources. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it sounds to me that really uh, a person can benefit so greatly from coach training, even if they don't have any desire to become a life coach? Oh, you mm -hmm. bet. I mean, coach training is about designing your internal resources, mm -hmm. getting yourself uh, really engaged in a congruent, effective way to use your inner power. Mm -hmm. How come it's not taught in school? <laughs> <laughs> We're getting there. I've got uh, right now all over the world, uh, coaches, coach trainers are teaching a course called Teacher as Coach. Mm. And we're starting to do summer camps this next year uh, for teachers, as well as, of course, we've been teaching university teachers in these special uh, training programs, what we call uh, tra training courses for um, uh, educators. And uh, it's coming. It really is. It's awesome. But it's slow because governments haven't yet understood how important this kind of work is for the genuine development of people. Mm -hmm. It's just starting. Mm -hmm. Well, at least it's starting. Uh, can I tell you about the four big rounds? Sure, please. These are internal conversations that really stop people a lot. Okay. Okay. Uh, and the first one... Um, we sometimes call it fear of dreaming. Mm. And again, oh. you see that visualization. A dream is a, a, a visual question where we look and ask, you know, what's important here? And suddenly we get answers and we start to dream about what we want. And uh, if we don't ask, what do I want? Uh, we don't get vision. Mm. So fear of dreaming is a big one. And it is something that uh, coaches assist people to move past. Often we almost need to use our tone of voice. You know, you can do it. It's been done before. 
even when it seems the hardest, you know, there's, there is a new day coming. Those kinds of places where people begin to uh, wonder, can I step out of this? Can I begin to trust myself? We assist people uh, once they step into coaching just to explore how to trust themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, th that makes a big difference. We begin to uh, discover they can, you know, people discover they can tune into their dreams and really learn how to make them real. Mm -hmm. I can imagine that trusting, learning how to trust yourself is, is a, a big piece. It is. Uh, some people have never had any practice with that because they just didn't get much trust when they were young. So discovering that uh, you've got all the resources you need is a big part of what occurs when you're in a coaching conversation. Uh, coaching opens up the creative mind. And people said, wow, what happened there? I just discovered I knew what to do. And that mm -hmm. starts the process. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> instead of, <clears throat> excuse me, instead of telling someone what to do, you're helping them to find it within themselves. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. We're asking uh, generally a series, very grouped and carefully selected questions that go with effective coaching that move people past these blind spots. And these open-ended questions, when they become curious about them, take them into whole different parts of the mind-brain system. And great discoveries happen. Mm -hmm. hmm. <laughs> I just had this picture of, <laughs> of a, a little whisk broom in the brain dusting off <laughs> areas <laughs> that haven't been used in a while. <laughs> That's a nice idea. <laughs> Oh, okay, so the so the first gremlin door is fear of dreaming. Right. And, and, you know, as soon as we do dare to dream, we dare to get inspired. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, is the focus of what uh, in the art and science of coaching, our major coaching program, we call uh, module one, okay. how people get inspired. Mm -hmm. It's a very mm -hmm. key area. Mm -hmm. What are some of the what are some of the things that uh, perhaps you could recommend to listeners to trigger their inspiration? Uh, is you know so I don't know something like journaling or, or what what kinds of what are a few things that you could recommend to people? Well, journaling is useful for sure, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know you can ask some questions about small actions. You know, what's one easy thing I can do? What might be the best uh, way I could begin to have a, uh, some inspiration today? Mm -hmm. And uh, start early in the morning when you're fresh and stay with what inspires you uh, as long as you can mm -hmm. so that you put off, if you like, all the tangles and the cobweb thoughts and all the things that uh, generally bog you down and one by one, step by step, uh, build an inspiration platform. Mm -hmm. I just had this thought of spending an extra five minutes or so in bed before you get up in the morning and asking yourself, what would inspire me today? Excellent. And, and pause at that point to visualize yourself actually doing that. Mm -hmm. See mm -hmm. yourself at your best. Just a little uh, four-star uh, commercial with yourself as the star. <laughs> <laughs> and just see yourself really acting in the way you want to act and responding in the way you want to respond and enjoying the moment in the way you want to enjoy the moment wise words. Okay, well, let's go on then and look at our second gremlin. Because the second gremlin is a big one. Uh, it has to do with uh, fear of failure in many respects. Because as soon as people implement, as soon as they start to act, 
up comes gremlin number two. Mm -hmm. uh, and it often got triggered when we were children, when we were ridiculed for, you know, creating results that weren't perfect or didn't match other people's expectations. And so um, as we start our productive life, you know, as we start to do our work or our um, creation of the day, these fears come up. We don't want to be laughed at, Janine. We do not want other people to say, hey, you're way down low on the scale and there's so many who are better than you. That don't want to be compared, as I mentioned, with VUCA. This ties right into the VUCA classification because uh, as soon as people compare, uh, then they generally see themselves as worse or they can always find someone who's better. Yes, you probably can always find someone who's better <laughs> or has done something better, or has accomplished more. Or... Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we could call this victim identification. Okay. Uh, okay. People, and, and this is a big one in the 21st century. Do you notice how many people have joined movements where the whole emphasis is on I'm a victim? Yes. And yes. It's, it's fine to join forces to change things. But if the impetus comes from I'm a victim, that's like pulling the plug even before you begin. Uh, we need to step into our resources and our capabilities. Uh, if there's any kind of cynicism, uh, anything that points to the uh, others having more resources than we do, and of course the world is unequal. Good Lord. I mean, that's the nature of human beings. Some have created kingdoms and some have created ant heaps. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we don't have to say, oh, I'm just a person who lives on an ant heap. We, we can notice that everyone has inner resources. It doesn't matter about the external world. And it certainly doesn't matter how people compare you to others. Uh, we are the ones who hold the key to our own development. Absolutely. And, and Marilyn, you know, I, sometimes I get very frustrated in, in talking to people that they do have this victim mentality. And I, I say, if you're, if you're a victim, there's nothing you can do because the, the control, the forces are outside of you. And, and if you can't take responsibility for who you are and where you're at and where you want to go, if it's always about other people and being a victim, you don't have any, any resources. You got it. Uh, you know, right now I'm doing a lot of um, public seminars, town halls on climate change. Mm -hmm. Because uh, that's a big issue here in British Columbia. We've had forest fires up the yin-yang for the last two years. So weather change is in our house, and it's going to only get worse. It's happening in real time. Uh, and there's huge storms all over the world and floods and, um, you know, massive rainfalls. And this is only going to get worse. So I'm talking with people about what can we do. And people aren't used to taking action because mainly they've compared themselves to other leaders and said, I can't, you know, do anything myself. And as I'm working with them, I'm showing them, you know, uh, every one of us can uh, create this worldwide infrastructure we need to manage power use and change our economic life. So we're on the electricity grid. Every one of us can uh, do the simple things like get our own solar panels and uh, get an electric, uh, you got an electric scooter, you know, anything where we're not contributing to the weather change crisis. Mm -hmm. And uh, people get very excited when they start to think of themselves as actually being able to create change, not having to wait for it to happen from uh, outside. Because it's this idea that it's all in the politics and we can't do mm -hmm. anything that stops real action where we can actually take it. And then people get empowered. That's what I was they just going to say. That's so empowering. <laughs> yeah. 
Mm. Okay, mm. so the third one is what we call system identification. Mm. Okay. And mm. that's also a big one. And system identification is the place where, in fact, we're afraid of upsetting people. Mm. You know, mm. I don't dare act because, uh, you know, in my family, uh, that kind of action has never been taken. Or uh, you understand, mm -hmm. or we're not in that category where we can do that sort of thing. We don't have the education. Mm -hmm. Or we are, um, I don't have the emotional support I need. Mm -hmm. And so there's a fear of being rejected by other people. And so people don't do what it takes to move out of their own fixation, if you like. Mm -hmm. And actually find their own values because we need to take on our own values, not those of those around us. Would not wanting to or being afraid of moving out of your comfort zone be included in here? No, that goes with the next ah, problem. Okay. I'll talk about that <laughs> next. But uh, with system identification, we actually um, <clears throat> are looking at how we're flawed very often mm. or <clears throat> how uh, we don't have what it takes. Like, you know, outside of me, there's this flawed government or organization or family. I, I you know, I, I would upset my family too much or my husband would get angry or, you know, it's, it's too hard on my children if I'm thinking about what I need. Mm -hmm. A lot of people live for their children and they don't actually notice that this system identification uh, isn't good for their children either. Their children take on the habits that the adults right. do. So uh, we need to find our own inner power and find our own values and move towards our own purpose. And that's what our children model. Mm -hmm. And that's what they then, then become able to do. Mm -hmm. So you're not doing this just for yourself. <laughs> It's for a larger, you know, for your family, even though it may seem like you're being selfish, that in doing so, you're you're setting an example for your children and others to move forward uh, with more ease. Beautifully said. Yeah. Self-development is never selfish. Right. It's for all of us. I, I call it the hero's journey sometimes. Mm. You know, the term, the hero's journey, mm -hmm. it's hmm. a, a wonderful metaphor. It goes with uh, books like The Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter, where some young person gets given a task that's far too big for them. Mm -hmm. And they don't know how to do it, and no one around them knows how to do it. But it must be done. It needs to be done. And they say, well, okay, I'll try. And as they step forth and try they immediately meet, meet big gremlins you know they meet the the angry forces mm -hmm. but in doing so they really develop inner resources they get stronger and stronger and as they do that they find friends they find a company of people who want the same and they start to really grow uh grow way beyond their wildest dreams and so they're actually uh, able to pass on all the learnings and the inner resources they've had to everyone who comes after them. Everyone benefits mm -hmm. from the fact mm -hmm. that they say, yes, I will do what my calling is. Mm, that's inspiring. Well, th thank you. I, I, I find it core to being human. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I find it like the essential idea to wake up with in the morning that life is calling me towards something that I'm uniquely able to do. And each one of us is, you know, each one of us is unique and we're all called to something that only we can do. And if we don't do it, it doesn't get done and the world doesn't have it and it's lost to everybody. Mm -hmm. It's true. I, I like to say, feel the fear and do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful yeah yeah okay so that's uh uh fear of upsetting people 
And uh, sometimes, you know, we focus on those who came before us, like our parents and those their injunctions to us. You've got to be a this kind of person or that kind of person. And we identify with that system. But one way to gain the ability with this is to focus on our children and think of, you know, what are the resources we're passing to our children? What if our life and our purpose could really amplify the abilities of not only the next generation, but the one after that and so mm-hmm. on? And I find that often that mindset from, from that you're bringing forward from the past is really unconscious. Oh, of course. Most of these are what we call shadow territory. Mm. We hardly notice them until we start with a fairly uh, important project and work with a coach along the way. And all of a sudden, a gremlin pops up, and it's been there all along. But, you know, until we really start something that's worth our real heart-mind connection, we don't notice those gremlins. So what is the fourth gremlin? It's what we call fear of conflict. And uh, each gremlin is bigger than the other in some ways. And each one leads to the other because with our resources, we first have to build the resources to move past our victim identification to have a success. But success itself is interesting. This is where uh, resting on your laurels or comfort zone thinking falls in. Uh, You were talking about that, Janine. Because often we do a big piece of work and we say, wow, everyone got value there. I did my piece. They're all saying I'm a hero. Wow. Well, okay, let's take a break now. I guess I'm done. (laughs) (laughs) You got it. (laughs) Oh, yeah. The money needs to roll in now. (laughs) And I say, who cares about the money? Because, in fact, exactly. um, it's not about raking it in ever. Mm-hmm. It's about inner satisfaction from finding what is genuinely even more valuable now that we've pulled so much together of our resources. Now real leadership is possible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now we actually dare to um, see the people around them as leaders see the people around ourselves as deserving mentorship in a real and effective way. And we're not so focused on ourselves anymore. We can actually give that mentorship and uh, move past those old conflicts. So the conflicts used to be with frequently uh, with the idea that life needs to have a completion that we need to look good going out, so to speak. <laughs> People want to end, you know, looking good. Mm-hmm. And often if you take on more challenges, you don't look good to certain people anymore. It's like, what? What are you doing, Marilyn, focusing on climate change? That's not your field. Or what are you doing, Marilyn, focusing on neuroscience? I've been, as I say, speaking at neuroscience conferences. And it's really valuable to start over. Janine, actually start over and say, you know, I'm not an expert in this area, but I do have a deeper understanding of what leadership is and what the qualities are that we need to bring into our future. And I can assist in this area as well so that we move past this idea that we need to look good and sound good and never show up like a beginner. Mm -hmm. Well, and you know, you you mentioned earlier, Marilyn, about, uh, you know, the money rolling in to me, if that's your your main focus, if that's your, you know, your main reason for doing something that's so hollow. And, and to me, it just it doesn't. I I don't know, it it, it's not for me, from my perspective, I've done a lot of different things in my life. But, but that's never been my motivation. It 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 follows because I'm doing something that I love and that I feel is is of service to people and helpful for other people. Not because I just want to earn a lot of money. 
I got it. Yeah. You see, that's one of the big problems in the world today. There's, uh, I think, uh, about eight people who own the resources, the actual money on the planet that's equivalent to the other 40%. I mean, uh, uh, there's a huge imbalance right now. Mm -hmm. I think uh, 40% of the planet are making $2 a day or less. Oh, and isn't that incredible? And, and about 1 billion people are still on $1 a day or less. So there's this huge imbalance. And when we start to live from our values, not only does our heart open up and our life becomes joyful, I mean, we actually experience energetic joy on a daily basis. But then uh, the values start to live our life and look out of our eyes and we start to find our inner courage. Uh, we don't need to look good anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, you look at people like Elon Musk, Musk who are, you know, way, uh, what, how do I say, way showers there, you know, they're, they're doing things that people are constantly criticizing, but they're really making it an effort to, to change things for the better on this planet. Right, right. Now, as soon as we keep trying new things, just like Elon Musk is doing, and some of the others who are being celebrated now, then we can truly begin to experience high levels of inner trust. Because we can have those failures, mm -hmm. uh, but they they aren't us, you know. We develop a legacy of purpose, and other people around us take that on. They take on the uh, proposition that uh, they are, their life can also be a gift to others. Mm -hmm. See, I came from pretty meager background in terms of educational uh, as assistance. I was a young person who uh, lived, uh, I'm 76 now, and when I was young, uh, girls were not expected to go on to university. In fact, my family scolded me for my interest in doing so and wouldn't wow. give me physical support. Yeah, because, you know, what, what is a girl going to do in university? Maybe become a nurse or a teacher. Because yeah. what man wants to marry a <clears throat> highly educated woman? <laughs> isn't that an interesting idea <laughs> it really is I mean I'm a little bit younger than you not a lot but a little bit but I guess because my mother went to college uh university and my dad I it was just kind of expected that my sister and I would go ah so that's an interesting different perspective the world <laughs> at least um started to move towards education among lots of people in North America, and, and what a benefit that is. But we need to continue bringing this gift out. There's so many young people in the world who do not know, and, and girls especially, mm -hmm. do not know how to even read. And uh, how to think is the foundation of our democracy. Our democratic institutions require that people think for themselves. Otherwise, they just become ideological rags being pulled around by one movement or another. And what a waste of time that is. It mm -hmm. doesn't create good leaders. Uh, yes, where are, where are the good leaders? Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> well, as soon as we begin to work with a coach and work with our own inner coaching system, too, we can think for ourselves. We move behind beyond inner conflict and fear of looking bad to other people and the need to rest on our laurels and in our comfort zone. And uh, we start to take risks again, you know, really need to uh, face the world and say, look, this world requires my real uh, focus right now. So I want personally to engage many of us in doing that. The world does need us right now, urgently. Mm -hmm. The weather change crisis is very serious. And I want a world where uh, our children get to have a world as well. And they're our grandchildren and their children. Because if climate change goes even a half percentage higher, the 
zone of looming weather disaster gets very high. The droughts are bigger than the uh, water storms. We'll have wind storms and growing areas that will become deserts and lots more people will be immigrants trying to reach other lands and there'll be food crises and it'll, it's not a world I want to give my children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we can actually stop that now if we all take on leadership and move beyond these inner gremlins and say, yes, I can. I can start with myself, get a solar system, uh, get an electric vehicle if I need one or take a, a transit. I can work with the governments around me and uh, encourage people to actually make up their own minds and uh, not be passive. I can also talk to people. See, a lot of people, uh, they live in their own zone and they don't talk to others about the urgency of our times. Mm -hmm. I want people to be leaders now. And I'm asking them to please take on leadership, have town halls, talk to people, take on and get the courage that you need for this hero's journey that we all need at this point in time and vanquish your own gremlins in the process. Mm -hmm. So Marilyn, you're saying it's too early to give up. Don't give up. Take action. Oh, you bet. We've got 12 years here. And it, there's an awful lot that we can do in 12 years. And 12, and 12 years will go by fast. <laughs> yeah. And that they say that's when carbon change locks in. Uh -huh. But uh, right now, Germany's had days where they're 55% on electricity. Costa Rica is 100%. Uh, mm -hmm. We can build this infrastructure fast. This kind of thinking is starting in China. I'm spending a lot of time in China. And we're talking to people on a daily basis, coaches everywhere, to spread the news about starting yourself. Don't wait for governments. Invite governments to uh, take on the kind of leadership that uh, hold this in place and, and don't, if you like, fall into under the sway of the old fossil fuel industry. Mm -hmm. But really just do it yourself. Mm -hmm. What are some other things that you recommend, as long as we're talking about climate change right now and taking action, some of the other things besides you mentioned, like getting solar panels or electric vehicle or electric bike or something like that, uh, what, what are a, a few of the other things that, that you find that people can easily do on their own? Well, the most important things uh, re really do use and develop your coaching mentality. So create communities. Right now, I've never up to this point spent much time in my own community, which is North Vancouver. Now I'm involved in the community. I'm uh, involved through the internet. We can create platforms. It's, it's like a new commons uh, where we're creating support systems and communities. And these communities then support building these infrastructures. In some areas, for example, where there's desert, let me say that word, desertification mm -hmm. happening, mm -hmm. people need to actually build cisterns on their houses. So they're collecting water, water for drinking. It's even happening in California. People need to actually collect water and build a resource system for themselves. And we need to create with that uh, systems where, in fact, we're uh, working with our governments to create wind turbines. Wind turbines are important. New refrigeration systems. And a big one is reducing food waste. Mm -hmm. So that means perhaps changing your diet somewhat to reduce meat, especially cows. Unfortunately, these lovely creatures create a great deal of methane. And methane is 37 times stronger than carbon to shift planet. We've got over a billion cows on the planet. They're cutting down tropical forests to create pastures for cows for the meat industry. And this is so incredibly crazy. We need to plant forests. Forests are our oxygen and our lungs. 
the more we have them, the further we can stop this process until we have everybody on the planet shifted over to an electric grid. Mm -hmm. Now, I mentioned educating girls in Africa. This is so important. I'm, we're starting coaching in Africa, working now in several countries and more coming aboard where the coaching network is attempting to assist real education systems where people use a coaching style of education. And of course, then comes family planning, which is a touchy one in some places. But uh, amazingly, educated girls, they start to take on their own choices. What do they want in life? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and I wanted to say uh, uh, just a couple of small things that people can do that I've been doing for years. Ziploc bags. I wash them and reuse them a million times until they're not usable anymore. Wow. Uh, when I go shopping, I've got my my grocery bags. I love the ones from Trader Joe's. Those are my favorite. I ha and I have uh, netted produce bags, so I'm not using the plastic when I when I get produce. Um, but just little things like that, that um, you know, where you're not using plastic bags all the time. Oh, the ocean right now has got an area the size of two Texases filled with plastic. I remember when it was one Texas. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I've given up my plastic addiction. It was hard, actually. We had to shift over and not even use the plastic spoons and cups they give you on planes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm refusing plastic. It's, it's starting to work. Well, I take, I keep in my suitcase for when I'm traveling, I keep for my husband and I, a couple of plastic spoons, plastic knives, plastic forks, and, and a couple of bowls so that um, we can have, because I like to have yogurt and granola in the morning, so I don't have to go out for breakfast when I'm traveling. And, um, and when I come home, I wash them and, and dry them and put them back in the plastic bag and put them back in my suitcase and just keep reusing them. Wow. Wow. Oh, here's something you can do, Janine. Sure. Tell people to look at the TED Talks on climate change. There's some really great, inspiring TED Talks that really assist people to get a vision for how we can do this. And there's one really great uh, YouTube um, person. He's an economist named Jeremy Rifkin, R-I-F-K-I-N. And he's got... a uh, uh, particular YouTube video called uh, The Third Industrial Revolution. It's a very useful one because it, ha it clarifies what's happening in Germany, how people are doing this when they get inspired, how it's beginning to happen in China, how we're going to be able to build it through uh, different countries, India. Ericsson is in India. This is a big one. I'll be going to India this fall. I'll be teaching coaching and working with the various ways we can begin to start the climate change revolution. That's so exciting. I love the work you're doing. I do too, actually. It's <laughs> wonderful to wake up in the morning. That's great. That's awesome. Wow. So we moved from the four gremlins to, to climate change, which is, is great. So, but let's just go back to the four gremlins again. Is there anything that you want to say to kind of tie that up or wrap it up? Well, dealing with the four gremlins, thank you for asking, because dealing with the four gremlins is a lifetime thing. Mm. We never quite conquer them. Have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. uh, this mm -hmm. fundamental quality we call ego seems to appear hither and around the bend. And we need to take it humorously. In fact, uh, we've got this old emotional system that can grab and take charge in any moment where we feel threatened. And it's mm -hmm. useful to notice that uh, even though it comes up and seems to grab our eyes and ears as if it's real, it's not us. And we can get our vision back very quickly and take three deep breaths and uh, sit down and relax and find our inner resources, look in, into the future and see the purpose we have and notice that that old conversation 
just was only that, an old conversation. It's not who we are. I teach mindfulness, which is something that I recommend to everyone as well. Uh, the art and science of mindfulness is a, an amazing process of regaining uh, your ability to just name a gremlin when it goes by and say, oh, that was just, you know, victim identification popping up or, you know, my fear of dreaming grabbed me there for a moment. I like that. I like that. Yeah, to be really aware um, of when those things are popping up. I mean, I can I can look, I, I've got the four quadrant chart in front of me and, and I can see how, like when it popped into my head to start the podcast, how I had to deal with each one of these because I had no idea how to do a podcast and it just felt like it was something I really needed to do. And <laughs> so I kept plugging away and learning and, and you know, making contacts and, and figuring it all out. But I, I could have easily gotten stuck in any one of these phases. Got it. Yeah. I understand completely that. Mm -hmm. Wow. So this is awesome. I'm so glad that we, oh, I just touched my microphone. I'm so glad that we did this. Is there anything else that you would like to, uh, to say to the listeners to wrap up? Uh, well, I, I want to thank you, Janine, for doing this. And any listeners who get inspired by this, please pass this on. We're in a world that requires action. Taking action is what it's all about. It's not about Marilyn or Janine. It's about all of us uh, genuinely beginning to begin on our journey as a leader, as a hero in our own uh, area of accomplishment and just as a pilgrim on the path, this is the human race unfolding. This is human evolution finding its pathway. And we are the ones who can do it. Mm, I like that metaphor, a pilgrim on the path. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, I hope everyone takes Marilyn's words to heart because she's very inspiring and she walks her talk. You know, I think that uh, you are someone that we can look to for inspiration. Absolutely. May I tell you a tiny story to end? Yes, please. Uh, this is a story about a guy who had a huge fish tank in his living room. And in this giant fish tank, uh, which was a seawater fish tank, he held a, a, smell, a small shark. Now, that small shark, which was about... Uh, a little longer than a 12 inch ruler would mm -hmm. swim up and down in the fish tank all day. And he had that shark there for seven years. Oh my goodness. And then he had to move uh, out of the city to a different place, he had to sell his fish tank. And he decided to give the fish tank, uh, the fish, pardon me, the shark to Ocean World. The Ocean World Aquarium, which you may know is the size of a football stadium, very big, full of many kinds of sharks and different kinds of fishes and uh, marine life and rays, and it's, it's fascinating. Now, he, they took his shark, no problem, and he was gone for three and a half years. On return, he went back to the uh, ocean aquarium and looked for his shark. He spent two hours watching them, er, every one of them go by. He saw every shark. And he said, oh, it must have died. Oh, what a shame. And then suddenly a huge two-meter shark swam by with all the markings and the nick in the tail that his little shark had had. And he said, wow, what happened in three years? What happened? So I say this question right now for all of us has to do with the same metaphor. Our leadership as individuals is all about the size of the tank we're willing to swim in. <laughs> so I ask you, how big is your tank? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. How big is your tank? How big is your vision? Yeah. Thank you so much, Marilyn. This has really been wonderful. I really appreciate who you are. Thank you. Awesome. Take care, Marilyn. Uh, thank you and uh, be well. Thank you. Goodbye to all the listeners. Thank you again. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening. And thank you so much, Marilyn Atkinson, for all you do in the world and for sharing some of your incredible, valuable tools with us. The podcast website is realjanine.com where you can listen to or download episodes and click on links to my guest's information. And all of Marilyn's information will be on the podcast website, plus a, a JPEG of the four quadrant uh, map that she developed so that you can see it in person. Um, let's see, where was I? Because I digressed there. There is a donate button if you feel inspired to support this work, as this is my service. You can sign up for the podcast bi-weekly blog newsletter to keep on, on new episodes, archives, life updates, and healthy recipes. And remember, Janine is J-A-N-E-A-N. -E to subscribe to Keeping It Real with Janine, go to iTunes or your favorite podcast provider. And check out my podcast YouTube channel with video slideshows of my conversations. Do you know someone who would benefit from my conversation with Marilyn Atkinson? Of course you do. Please, please share the love. Thanks for listening. Take care and be well.